to share today's video because I found a perfect fall theme for us to watercolor and I will show you step by step all three layers that will help us create this beautiful Chinese lantern or physalis plant. This means we're going to practice wet on wet technique on layer one, wet on dry on layer two, and do some extra detailed work on layer three. So get your small round brushes ready. There will also be some important tips that I don't want you to miss like changing your pigment value and color temperature to create realistic form, alternative pigment choices for vibrant oranges that you can use for any fall theme watercolor including pumpkins and a somewhat unexpected color choice that you will definitely want to use with your oranges to help create some realistic shadow effects. The big question of course is what we're going to do to spice up this composition and I think I found a perfect little creature that will help us add some visual interest. So I will show you that as well but of course if you don't like the snails feel free to skip that part. So let's dive in. The reference photo and the list of materials is in the video description below and if you are watching this on Patreon you can also download the black and white outline and watch a real-time version of this painting with extra commentary. Okay, let's start off by painting the first layer of orange color, but add some slight variation in temperature and value. By the end of this first layer, we will have something that looks like this. And I tested a whole bunch of oranges and decided that Windsor Orange Red Shade would be the best base color for us because it gives a hint of warm pink. You can also use something like Scarlet Lake which would give it an even stronger pink undertone or go with more yellow pyro orange. It's completely up to you. I'm going to use Hansa Yellow Deep from Daniel Smith on the lighter parts, mostly on top, and a bit more saturated transparent pyro orange for the darker parts. Notice that I'm painting in sections, leaving a thin white line completely untouched. This helps me create a better, more realistic shape because I'm creating a clear separation on the edge between the sections, allowing me to have different values for lights and darks. Each section of the lantern is facing the light from a different angle and we want to capture these differences as accurately as possible to create a realistic result. It also allows me to capture some of the smaller highlights, leaving pure white strips without needing to use masking fluid or white gouache. I will cover some of these lines later, leaving only the ones that I need, but for now it's very, very useful to paint in sections this way, building an even coverage on each lantern. So I painted a branch using a combination of hooker's green and perlin violet. This violet is going to come into play in just a minute because we're going to apply it to the shadows on our lantern. And let's not forget the tiny stems, a little bit of Hansa yellow deep at the base and maybe some of that same green and violet that we used on the big branch on top. Hey there little buddy, our snail is dark brown of course, but let's start with a warm orange underpainting, capturing the glowing highlights underneath the brown and then we will follow up later with some brownish violet and blue. Let's wait for this layer to dry and the second layer is all about shadow definition so we're going to work wet on dry meaning wet paint on dry paper and only cover the darker areas of the lantern this time my main color is transparent pyro orange a really vibrant orange from core you can use one from daniel smith and as i mentioned we're going to be using perlin violet for the darkest shadows you can also use something like quinacridone violet, especially the one from Core. It has a hint of a brownish orange in it. Violet and orange are complementary, meaning they're on the opposite side of the spectrum roughly, so they glaze so well together. You may remember this trick from my daffodil tutorial, 
where we applied the same principle to create beautiful clean shadows on the yellow flower using purple and violet. I'm still painting in sections here but my pigments are much more saturated and I'm being careful to check with my reference photo and only apply them on the darkest parts of each section, blending with clear water where necessary. In some cases, I am even using negative painting technique to create some beautiful texture. The lanterns have these tiny veins, just barely visible, and I want to capture them on this side by painting around the lighter vein, creating an illusion of a vein going across and around. If you're interested in negative painting technique, especially how to apply it to botanical subjects, I have an in-depth tutorial here on YouTube, so you can watch it after, and I will leave a link in the video description below. A few shadow details on the big stem using the same hooker's green and perlin violet. And the same violet on the snail, creating some strong shadows and grooves with the tip of my brush. At this point we can definitely see how dark the lanterns are going to turn out, so we can start on the leaves, knowing exactly how light and dark we want to go, meaning what will be the value of our pigments, so that the greenery is framing our lanterns nicely without overpowering it. On the first layer I will do a simple wash using the same hooker's green I used on the branch, maybe adding some green gold to the lighter parts facing the sun and some perlin violet to the shadows. I'm using wet on wet technique here. Once this layer is dry, we can put down the second layer on the leaves, but this time let's add some cooler blue to our hooker's green. I went with Prussian blue, you can use any transparent blue to mix with your green to cool it off a little bit, and let's use the negative painting technique to paint around the light veins, just the big ones, we don't need too much detail on the leaves, our lanterns should be the focus of the composition, but let's outline some of them. I know many of you recognize this technique from the recent video on how to paint greenery. Thank you all for your amazing feedback, it appears you really like that tutorial, so I'm working on the one for tropical greenery specifically. And you know how we always want to add a bit of color into our leaf shadows. So this is kind of an important tip if you want to have more realistic greenery. Here I will just use the same pyro orange from the plants and add it to the leaves wet on wet, capturing that bounce back light and the color in the shadow. Let's add a little bit of light blue undertones to the shell of the snail. They're barely visible and you can use any transparent blue, including the one we're applying for the leaves. Final step is our accent layer and I'm using the same pigments, violet mixed with pyro orange in different proportions, sometimes a little bit more violet, sometimes a little bit more orange, and adding lots and lots of tiny shadows and using negative painting technique to now paint around most of the veins I see. Here you may want to switch to a smaller brush to get the details right. I'm using Winsor Newton Series 7 Sable brush. It has a very precise tip, so I've been using the same brush for this entire painting. And of course, let's not forget to add some shadows to the snail. This is looking good, but we can still add more depth by glazing some deep bluish green on the leaves, only on the darker portions of the leaves, using hooker's green again mixed with Prussian blue. Alternatively, you can use something like aqua green from Winsor Newton, and blending with clear water towards the edges, notice that I'm still adding some orange into the shadows. The branches will need some more value, only on the darkest parts, and my little friend here, he may need some indigo for the darker parts of the shell, just to make sure he stands out more and doesn't get lost in all this sea of orange and green, and a little yellow sunspot on top. 
If you like the video, do leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Check out that negative painting tutorial next and I will see you a week from now. Have a beautiful day.